Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and welcome to yet another 5 Minute Friday where I share my engineering experience with you. And today we're talking about a very interesting topic, today we're talking about solid, what exactly is solid and how do we implement it in Go. So without further ado, let me go ahead and throw in 5 minutes on the clock. So the simplest thing we can do is look it up on Wikipedia and if you open up Wikipedia it shows something like this. It says in object oriented programming SOLID is a mnemonic acronym for five design principles intended to make software designs more understandable, flexible and maintainable. And that is exactly what we're going to do in this video. We're going to talk about how you can improve your code using these five principles when it comes to SOLID. Single Responsibility Principle, Open Closed Principle, List of Substitution Principle, Interface Segregation Principle and finally Dependency Inversion Principle. So the first principle we're talking about is Single Responsibility Principle which basically states that a class should have one and only one reason to change, meaning that a class should have one and only one job. And that is as simple as it sounds. So basically in the case of Go, a type or a function should have one and only one job, one and only one responsibility. Next let's go ahead and have a look at an example about the Single Responsibility Principle. So as you can see in this example we have two types, we have the type circle and the type square and they both have this method called area which basically outputs the result and calculates the area of a specific shape. Now when it comes to this code which apparently doesn't look that bad, there are certain problems which go against the single responsibility principle. So as you can see in the simple method we try to do two things, we try to output the result and we try to calculate the area over here. So as you can tell we should separate this in at least two methods, one method which calculates the area and another method which outputs the result. But wait a second, what if we wanted to output the result in a different format because at the moment the result is outputted in text. So as you can see from this example we pretty much have the same example, however this time the area method just calculates the area, it doesn't output anything. Now when it comes to outputting we created a dedicated type for that. As you can see over here we created the type outputter and basically outputter has a couple of methods, it has the text method and it has the JSON method. Now notice here in the signature of the JSON and the text method we actually receive a shape, we don't receive a specific shape like circle or square. So having this shape interface inside both of these methods, inside text method and inside JSON method is a good thing because it allows the outputter to be very flexible. So basically if you add in another format, if we add in for example YAML or HTML, that's gonna work for any shape which implements the shape interface. Next we are talking about the open closed principle which basically states that objects or entities should be open for extension but closed for modification. Now that is a big explanation, that's why let's go ahead and have a look at an example. So as you can see we have two shapes, we have the type circle and we have the type square. And this time we also have a new type called calculator which has a new method called area sum. Now what is the problem with this code and why this break the open closed principle. So if you have a look at the signature of the area sum function, shapes is not a specific type. Shapes is actually an interface value. So basically interface means anything. Interface means strings, integers, slices and including shapes which are like circle and square. Now another problem I see with this code which goes against open closed principle is the fact that we have switch and case here. So the open closed principle says it should be open for extension and closed for modification. So let's say you want to add another new shape called triangle. For this function to work with triangle shapes, now it should have another case. So basically you would need to modify this function in order for it to work with triangles. And that goes against the open closed principle. Now how do we fix this mess? So as you can see in this example pretty much is exactly the same. We added another shape called triangle and we also added another method for this shape called area. Now when it comes to the arguments, this time we do not receive an interface type, this time we receive a shape. We receive an interface type which is basically an abstraction. So basically if you want to add in a new shape we would only have to implement the area and that's it. We would not have to change this area sum function at all. And that is the open closed principle. Open for extension and closed for modification. Next we are talking about list of substitution principle which basically states that let t of x be a property provable about objects of x of type t and t of y should be provable about objects of y of type s where s is a subtype of type t. What? what exactly that means. Now that is a vague example and a vague explanation, that's why let's go ahead and throw in an example and show you what exactly I mean. And at the bottom of the file before the main starts we have a custom type called printer and basically this printer type has this method called info which receives a person. Anything that implements a method called getName which returns a string is actually a person. As you can see we only have one type called human and this human implements this method called getName and it returns a string and thus it is a person. But wait a minute, the human type is not the only one who implements this person interface. We actually have another type called teacher and another type called student who actually do implement this interface. They do implement this interface by inheriting every field and method of this human type. Now when it comes to Go we don't have inheritance but we have composition but in the end you end up with a type which has both fields 
and methods from this human type. So as you can see, all of those types implement the personal interface and thus all of those types can be passed as an argument to the info function. So basically the list of substitution principle says if we can pass into this function the human type, then we can pass into this function also the teacher type and the student type. And that is true because they both implement that interface by inheriting those fields and those methods. So if the teacher type and the student type is considered a subtype of the human type, then they both can be substituted with the human type. Next we are talking about interface segregation principle which basically states that the client should never be forced to implement an interface that it doesn't use or clients shouldn't be forced to depend on methods they do not use. And that is as simple as it sounds. Keep interfaces simple, preferably just one method. So as you can see in this example we have the same old shapes and they both implement this shape interface. Then we also have two functions. We have the function called area sum and we have the function called area volume sum. However there is a small problem with this example which breaks the interface segregation principle. As you can see here inside the type declaration inside the square declaration we have both the area and we have the volume. However the volume is not needed. A square doesn't even have a volume because it's a flat shape. In this function as you can see we don't use the volume at all. All we use is the area. So to fix this example all we have to do is to separate this shape interface into two interfaces. So right now we have an interface called shape which only has the area method and we have another interface called object which accepts both the area and the volume. Both of these functions area sum and area volume sum haven't changed at all. However if you look up the type declaration when it comes to the square the square now implements only the area. As you can see from this example the interface segregation principle is an important principle because it allows us to have powerful interfaces which only have one method and thus they are easy to implement and they are easy to use. And lastly we are talking about the dependency inversion principle which basically states that entities must depend on abstractions not on concretions. Now if that sounded very confusing and vague let's go ahead and throw in an example to show you what I mean. So as you can see in this example we have two types corresponding to two databases. We have one type for MySQL database and we have another type for Postgres database. And then you have the user repository which is like a communication point between the database and the client which in our case is the main function. So basically this DB field inside the user repository directly depend on the MySQL database and that is a bad thing because the dependency inversion principle says we should not depend on specifics, we should not depend on concretions, we should depend on abstractions, on interfaces in other words. So it's actually quite simple to fix this, all we have to do is to make sure that this DB field depends on an interface type and not on this specific type which is MySQL in our case. So as you can see in this example the DB field this time doesn't depend on a specific type, it depends on dbcon which is actually an interface which says any type that has this query method and returns an interface it actually is a DB connection. But that being said the get users method from this repository now will work correctly because it will not have to change anything in the future because it says that DB field is a DB con type and basically everything that is not a DB con it's not gonna work at compile time. So this is dependency inversion in a nutshell you should not depend on specific types you should not depend on specific databases in this case you should depend on abstractions you should depend on interfaces. So this principle is available for functions for methods and for struct fields so make sure to use it properly and also make sure to use a dependency inversion principle because that is a super neat principle. So that is pretty much it on this video and that is pretty much it on this 5 minute Friday. So make sure to check out the resources section in this video description below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!